It's time for New Wellness TV with Dr. Lee. Join your host, the accomplished Dr. Sherilyn Lee, as she welcomes the leading experts in health and well-being as they explore the advancements in natural health, physical fitness, nutrition, integrative medicine, and self-discovery. Good morning, good morning everyone. Whatever time or day or night you're watching this fantastic show. Again, we're back again. New Wellness TV with Dr. Lee and I have a distinguished guest with me and you know, I'm just so happy that I kind of watched his growth a little bit because I've been knowing him for a few years here. And I'm just so honored to have him here as my guest and what he's doing in the world to make a difference with the world itself is so powerful. And also, I'm going to be part of it. So we're going to talk about the summit. But I want to introduce my guest, and I want to thank you for being here. I'm going to let you tell everybody your last name, Rashid. My name is Rajiv Utamchandani. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Thank, thank you for being here. Thank, thank you. Thank you for being here today. Thank, thank you. So you know, I, I want to kind of jump right in, and I want you to tell people a little bit more about you, uh, what you're doing. I know that you're an astrophysicist. Mm -hmm. And tell people exactly what that is and where you're working as an instructor, because I think it's so powerful for you to have done, uh, made this accomplishment before you were 30 years old. Mm -hmm. Before you were 30. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you. So tell people a little bit about you first. Yeah, so uh, my name is Rajiv Chandani. I'm Indian by nationality, but I was actually born and raised in the Philippines, partially raised in Hong Kong, and now I live in Los Angeles, and I've been here for 13 years. Mm -hmm. So I have kind of that multicultural, multi-ethnic upbringing. Yes, you do. Um, I, mean, I am an astrophysicist, so basically what that means is that um, by academic discipline, what we do is we study everything that's outside of the Earth. Any phenomenon, anything, the stars, the cosmos, the, the universe, planets, that falls within the realm of astrophysics. So that's what I used to do for research for some time. Mm -hmm. um, over the last eight years, I've been teaching at different colleges and universities. And um, over the past few years, specifically over the past two and a half years, I've been involved with addressing a lot of human rights and, and women's rights issues. And that's really where my heart lies now. Um, in terms of applying modern science and technology to address violence against women and children around the world. Right. We're going to get into that, but I want to ask because we just had an eclipse. Yeah. So yeah. why don't you tell us a little bit more about this eclipse that we just had? And yeah. So it did. I noticed that it did have an effect. I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. Effect on a lot of people's health. Uh, I'm not sure about that. That wouldn't be my area of expertise. I know expertise. it wouldn't be yours, but my yeah. daughter was actually in the ER herself that night. Okay. And it was over-demanding the people there, and then I called some other places. And, and just talking to certain people, subtly some symptoms and things right. they have been experiencing since. But okay. you're not going to get into that because that's right. not your area. <laughs> exactly. But just tell me a little bit more about the eclipse itself. That yeah, was sure. really so a phenomenal. Basically, of course, what happens during a, a, a solar eclipse mm -hmm. is that the moon gets in front of our point of view of the sun. Yes. So in this case, what was so special about this um, or last month's eclipse on the 21st is that um, it was a total solar eclipse as seen by at least, you know, a, a line through the United States. So if you right. were in Oregon and, and, and those areas, mm -hmm. you could have seen a total solar eclipse. Here, we saw a partial uh, solar eclipse. So um, who, whoever saw this, of course, you would have seen partially the moon get in front of the sun and the sun would have turned into a, a crescent shape. But that's nothing compared to what a total solar eclipse looks, uh, looks like because uh, essentially for a few moments, the entire sky would, would turn dark. Mm -hmm. So to experience that and to see the solar corona, which is kind of the, the outer layer of, of the sun, is, is just phenomenal. And I'm sure a lot of videos and everything just circulated yes, I massively have... online. Yeah. Um, it, was a, it was a very big deal. I, I myself actually um, took a group of, of homeless kids uh, from the Covenant House, which is a homeless youth shelter. Oh, really? And uh, we took about 15 of them, and we went to Griffith Observatory. So uh, for them, it was the first time, obviously, observing such an event. Oh, mm -hmm. my goodness. How wonderful. You, you're yeah. just amazing in what you're doing. Oh, thank you. And yeah. passionate about thank you. what you're doing, you know, as far as your organization. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to have you, what, what prompts you to go to school to become uh, an astrophysicist? Well, it... Uh, came basically by accident. When I first came to the United States, I wanted to be a professional wrestler. <laughs> oh, really? So, yeah, <laughs> and um, I was probably about 50 pounds heavier, and I had a shaved head and everything. Really? Uh, for, I cannot uh, envision I know. you looking that way. 
I was I looked that way for I think it was maybe six or seven years, mm -hmm. and there's a very popular wrestling school. I don't even know if it's still around. I'm sure it is. It's called Ultimate Pro Wrestling. That's in El Segundo. Okay. And that's where all of these wrestlers go pro um, to the WWE um, and other social organizations. So I really wanted to go there, and therefore I came to the United States for that purpose. But my parents told me that they'll send me to college if and only if I take um, a course. So my brother was <laughs> here ahead of me, and um, he said, why don't you take uh, astrophysics? And I did, and haven't regretted it since. So my first astronomy class, I just I just fell in love with astronomy. Yeah, I was at one of your events. Yes, I it remember. was absolutely amazing Thank to you. watch Thank what you, you did. One day we're going to have to show that to the world. It was, <laughs> sure, it was really really wonderful Thank to, you. to actually be up close and personal to see what you had put together there. It was Thank wonderful. you. Well, I do a lot of, in terms of astronomy and astrophysics, I try to use that as a language, if you will, to to unify humanity because. All of us, obviously, and it, you know, this day and age is probably worse than it has been in a long time. Right. Um, where we judge each other in terms of skin color or ethnicity or anything like that. Right. So what what astronomy does is that if you truly understand it, it really unifies us as one human species living on one planet Earth, and yes. that's basically what I try to try to uh, portray. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, and I know your students just love you. Well, <laughs> I love them too. So. <coughs> Excuse me. I got caught up in a few little fires mm -hmm. here when I was out of town. But uh, you're, you're just amazing. Thank you so much. Amazing. Thank you. So and likewise to you, obviously. Well, You've done just excellent well thank work. you. Uh, we met through, we have a wonderful mutual friend yes. that we met through. And yes. I have to say his name, Eric, Eric Roots. Yes. Hey, Eric. <laughs> yeah, because I told him I would. And yes. he is uh, an amazing human mm -hmm. being. And he is. He yes. brought you to my office, I think, what, in what, 10 years ago? Yeah, it's been about 10 years. 10 mm -hmm. years ago. It's been a long time. That's when my daughter said, oh, no, you need to be in front of a GQ magazine. <laughs> 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 I that remember, was, That was Siobhan. Actually. Now Siobhan have her master's in nutrition. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, everyone yeah. grows up. <laughs> yeah, they grow up. Yes, I'm so <laughs> proud of her. But uh, you've come a long way. So now let's talk about your organization mm -hmm. and this event that's coming up. Yes. That I am honored that I'm going to be part of it. So. We're honored as well. Yes. Yeah, so let's talk about the event. Sure. So I have actually several organizations that address human rights issues. Mm -hmm. um, so first and foremost, now I do consider myself a human rights and women's rights activist. And when I started my first nonprofit two and a half years ago, uh, the name of that nonprofit is the International STEM Society for Human Rights. For those who are interested, you can visit our website at www.isshr.org. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics. The purpose behind that is we try to apply modern science and technology to address especially violence against women and children. Okay. So we're working with law enforcement agencies here in Southern California, um, in India, to basically apply new systems which can address sexual assaults and, and human trafficking primarily. Right. So in that sense, we do a lot at the grassroots level. Um, those efforts, though, need to be supplemented because the more you look into human trafficking, the more you look into mm -hmm. sexual assaults, you realize how... Uh, prevalent these crimes are. Exactly. Human trafficking is a $150 billion industry. Yes, it and that's is. That's just insane. Yes, it is. Um, that's like a Fortune 500 company, you know, mm -hmm. and think about it. It's $150 billion, about two thirds of which, so about $100 billion, which is made from the sexual exploitation of, oh, of yes. girls and boys, uh, primarily girls and boys. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just, it just doesn't make any sense um, that these things are still going on to a greater degree in today's world than it ever has been. So mm -hmm. slavery is a very much a modern day truth and it's worse than it ever has been before. Most so definitely. how do we supplement that with um, uh, efforts in which that engage the general public to be more active members of the human rights cause? So that's what our event is about. That's just uh, that's coming up um, on September 14th. So September 14th to 16th, it's called the HER Summit. Everything I do, as I say, is always about HER. Um, and HER is an acronym that stands for Humanity, Education, Rights. So it's human rights overall, but certainly um, uh, alluding to the fact that our focus is primarily on, on women and girls, uh, yes. women and children. So the HER Summit is really, it's, it's, a, it's an enterprise that encourages social change through active participation from small to medium-sized businesses. So you, uh, of course, you're speaking at that event as well. Um, our, our other speakers are CEOs or directors of their either for-profit or non-profit organizations. Um, so well, they're talking. Let me just uh, share this yeah. with you. I don't think you knew that I am an ambassador for world peace. 
Oh, are you? To okay. the Women's okay. Health Federation. I, I may have. Okay, yeah. yeah. I think it rings I a bell. I think I said yeah. it, yeah, a long time ago. Yes, so yes, yes, yes. Then I have a nonprofit as well. Right, Why right. deal with women and children right. as it relates to, and men, right. uh, early screening for breast cancer. Right. And right, this right. is done through thermography because the youngest female that I have uh, examined uh, was actually uh, 15 years old. Wow. But I had a guess, and the youngest one she have seen was 12. Yeah, yeah. So I tell people we must screen our girls at very young er, 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 right. ages because there's something now that's called inflammatory breast cancer that's no longer detectable or hasn't been detectable by a mammogram or an ultrasound. But through infrared, it is detectable. And that's under my nonprofit, along with um, uh, stroke screening. So stroke screening I, I also do as well. And it's called Beauty Shop Stroke Screening mm -hmm. because we're having more and more young women have strokes than actually breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Are you aware of that? I don't. More women are dying from strokes than they are breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is why the two legs of my nonprofit for women uh, is uh, stroke screening and also breast screening because it's just it's been overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And I, I just want to say this, I don't want to stop you, no, because yeah. um, uh, I, I, I have a card that I don't have with me showing that how women are putting their cell phones in their... Right, right. Okay, and right, right where you're putting your cell right. phone is where they're showing more evidence sure. of breast cancer. Men in their pockets <coughs> and more prostrate. Right, exactly. Uh, and in their back pocket, more kidney cancer. Right. So the research is showing this. So a lot of young people, when they're out and about for safety, purposes you know we want to try to keep it on because we want to be able to call people but when it's next to your body i really advise them to turn it off yeah. there's so much happening you can quickly turn it on if you need to call somebody if yeah. you, something is happening quickly turn it on but right. leaving it on the body and what young women today is very you're right uh, it's, it's yeah. every day i receive a call with somebody mm -hmm. with cancer but if we could prevent some of the with this our young people with breast cancer that is so powerful for them to know and I just wanted to kind of bring that in because that is part of my nonprofit. And also, I'm really happy to be an ambassador for World Peace, right, right. which is really important. And right. that's what I do because not only with the health care and the clinic, but as each one have to teach one right. and bring them all in together. Right. And that's why I'm so proud of what you're doing Thank you. and happy to be part of what you're Thank doing you as likewise. well. So I, I know I cut you off a little bit. Oh, that's fine. But uh, yeah. I want you to sort of just continue on. Yeah, so... Uh, we have brilliant speakers such as yourself, of course, that are, are coming to the co to the summit, mm -hmm. um, addressing various issues. So the themes that we're addressing are environmental preservation, how small business owners can be more actively involved in that aspect, how you can address human trafficking, domestic abuse through uh, your business, um, and of course other individuals such as such as yourselves. And uh, we also have several law enforcement officers who are coming in to give a talk about what they do to address human trafficking. Um, the purpose behind all this is that we're gathering everyone together under one roof to talk about how we can be more active participants towards addressing social issues. And the point being that by addressing social issues, so if, if you and I, for example, have a small business, if I have a small business and I'm doing, let's say I'm selling a certain product, if I attach a social message to that, not only in terms of um, uh, just donations every once in a while, but in terms of act active grassroots participation that can enhance your company profile and your business profile and really take you to the next level so it's almost like the message of you help others you really are helping yourself mm -hmm. and we want to show that by example um, because now everything uh, is about social media anyway so if your business has a story then people will be more inclined to participate in your product and to participate with you as an individual or, or as a business um, furthermore, our proceeds are going to three specific grassroots movements that are addressing um, uh, homelessness and human trafficking amongst youth. So the first one is um, our own project for our own nonprofit that we're working, trying to work with the Department of Justice, um, the San Diego Unified School District Police Department to do a pilot project to address human trafficking in San Diego. Um, the second project is we're working with the Covenant House. So I'm actually um, starting an astronomy and science course for homeless youth at this homeless youth shelter. And the purpose behind that entire initiative is to empower homeless and trafficked youth to become change makers in our society. Oh, well, how and powerful, then, how yeah, powerful, exactly. yeah. And then thirdly is we just want to donate some proceeds to our partner, 
um, organizations um, scattered throughout India mm -hmm. that are safe homes that actually rescue uh, young girls from being trafficked and they're always struggling with funding so we want to be able to support them mm -hmm. um, so the purpose being we gather everyone together everyone talks about what they do uh, individuals are inspired they take the message home and we follow up with every single entity that actually makes an appearance at the summit mm -hmm. um, and then finally we have our own grassroots movements that address these issues as well so it's a multi-pronged thing it's, it's mm -hmm. absolutely wonderful I am honored to be part Thank of you. and to have you really just explain it so thoroughly here Thank today uh, for our audience it's really powerful yeah. and, and I think um, also worth noting is on September 14th we have our fashion show so it's basically, it's a fashion show gala. It's an opening to the uh, the summit, which will be primarily on the 15th and 16th mm -hmm. when you're speaking. Right. Um, but it's really fun. You know, we have designers flying in from all over the world. Um, and uh, the purpose behind that is to raise awareness for, for human rights and to make, really to make human rights and um, uh, women's rights activism the new sexy and the new cool. Okay. So we, we want to be able to do that. And that's the purpose of our, our fashion show to just the new make sexy it look. without being approached the wrong way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because yeah. that that's that's just the yeah, key because, there. You know, um, when individuals think of human rights activism, you think of Dr. Dr. King, you think of Mahatma Gandhi, you think of Malala, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. and those are you know people we can't even touch, right? They're they're legends already. Uh, right. They are legends, and and they they are legends already. So, what we want to do is bring that to the everyday person. Uh, anybody who's out there who does not have to be to sacrifice their entire life just to be called a human rights activist and for the younger kids especially to say that you know um, just as it's like ultra cool to be a basketball player or a rapper it's really cool to be a human rights activist I love so, that yeah. I love that that's yep. wonderful mm -hmm. and you you could see in your in your eyes and the passion that you have thank you you know, I met your mom. You have a beautiful mother. <laughs> Thank you. And I could She'll see She'll be how, there, by the way. <laughs> I, I know. I'm going yeah. to have a chance to see yeah. her. Um, what, what really gave you this deep passion to, I mean, because you, you can see it. You can mm. feel it, the deep passion you have for the organization. Yeah. You know, basically, I know, because you, you grew up with a wonderful mother yeah. and sisters. Right. Uh, well, cousins. But cousins. I have one cousin, brother. Yeah. One brother. brother. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. To, to have the passion to mm -hmm. do what you're doing now uh, for others. Yeah. Now, the school, the Covenant School? Covenant House, yes. Covenant House. Were other, would other children be able to attend or they have to be actually at this house? How would it be opened up? I know you're going to have this at one location, mm -hmm. but will other students or children be able to rotate? And then what is the age range? So at, uh, for Covenant House California, um, they are 18 to 24. Okay. So they address uh, specifically that age group. And they're all homeless, so they go into the shelter. Uh, the purpose behind this course is that it's actually, um, we're drafting it so that they can actually get high school credit Ooh, for this. Because there's good. a charter high school there in the shelter itself. Okay. Um, so there's a lot of challenges associated with that. And because it's that population, it has to be specifically catered to that population. Um, we are thinking of hosting more general sort of events, but th that'll be later in the future where anybody can just come and just... Just be inspired, you know, yeah. Wonderful. through astronomy and science. Okay, yeah. and how soon would that be? Because I know people um, listening and probably say, you know, um, I might be able to share to someone that yeah. I meet, meet on the, you know, out there, yeah, yeah. and tell them there's something they can do or go. We're thinking of go. first quarter next year. Okay. Yeah, so that we can at least have a, a consistent venue. Okay. Um, that we can at least uh, have not only myself but perhaps others to 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 talk as well and share their passions about these issues. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, yeah I, I had a short time of homelessness myself, and mm. I'm not going to share on the show here today, yeah. Yeah. but it is part of my book entitled Written Before I Was Born. Right. So I was homeless for a while. Wow. So mm. I actually know what that feel like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, not, it's not a good feeling at all. No. No. Not at all. Yeah. So, and sometimes we, we wonder, you know, it's like, how did I get here? Right. Exactly. You know, it's like, how did I get here? Especially when you're younger, right. it's even different when, you know, as you move on in life. Right. And right. then you have to know that I could pick myself up from this. Right. You know, there's things I can do to, I can move forward. There's right. people out there and resources. Right. So each one teach someone and please share this video with your friends so they can share it with their friends because we never know what people are going through right now. Mm -hmm. And as, as we're talking right now, uh, within the last 30 days, I have had at least six people call me to tell me I'm going to be homeless. Wow. 
Yeah. Wow. At least six people. Hmm. So it's, it's a rapidly moving. Um, two of them have children. Okay. And so we've been able to kind of work some things out with them. But they will call me because they know that I would probably can find resources for them. Uh, I have a very dear friend who is over the Housing Authority hmm. for California. And she's been really amazing. I can always reach out to her and she would always assist in finding as well. But to have, you know, that age group and then older too, but so many younger kids, mm -hmm. you know, that are just, you know, being raised by younger parents and don't want to live in that household or they don't want to follow guidelines or they just don't have the parents and they, they just run away. So, and then they get caught up with, you know, all these other things that are happening and put into a system that they don't know how to get out of. Mm -hmm. So just wanting them to know that there's, there's hope for you, there's help. When I meet young people and they look like they're on the street and maybe don't have a place to go, I always pull them to the side and try to ask some questions mm -hmm. without prying to see maybe what's going on. Mm -hmm. Because when you reach out and show that you care and you're concerned, people will talk to you. I'm right. sure people will talk to you for many reasons yeah. because you're, you, know, you, you, you are a caring person. You're a handsome person. Oh, thank person you. as well and that kind of helps but the thing is the compassion of mm -hmm. wanting to help and and that's what a person would see and not just see you feel it you know you can feel that kind of passionate energy which is really powerful and I'm just grateful that is someone like you for this movement thank you so much you know, I, thank I really you. am thank you so the age group again is from 18 to 24 for 18 this particular to 24. shelter for this particular shelter, okay. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people falling in that group. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's always um, a struggle there all yeah. over the nation. And um, the statistics show that about 70% of homeless youth are trafficked youth as well. Mm -hmm. So it's just, um, it's a, not a pleasant combination. Right, know? right. And therefore, what what we wanna do is, is as I mentioned, our, our tagline for that particular project is to empower homeless and trafficked youth to become change makers in our society. So yes. I feel like, because they've been through so much, they know so much um, about how the world works and mm -hmm. about basically the ugly side to things. Oh, yes. And I know a lot of them seek opportunities to not just live an average life, but to actually use their hardship that they've experienced so painfully in the past um, mm -hmm. and use that to actually influence what's going to happen in the future, to become leaders, to inspire others that they got out of homelessness or being trafficked, mm -hmm. they're survivors, and others like them, and there are many, can follow the same path. Yes, mm -hmm. because you, you really, in order for to reach out to help someone, especially at that level, you have to have, ha have gone through it. Yeah. Gone through it and came out of it, and now exactly. you can say, look, this is where I am today. Right. And you can do the same thing. Right. And when they meet someone to say, you know, you really were in the same position I was in. Mm -hmm. You know, it makes it's a big difference. So. Yeah. One of our speakers, in fact, at the event, his name is Tom Jones. So he's the uh, founder of an organization called the Hope Project based in San Diego. OK. He's in his, I think, mid 40s now. Anyway, again, at the, at the talk, he'll explain more about his background. But he was trafficked from when he was five years old to 15 years old. Five years old. Yeah. As, as a young boy. Right. All over um, all over the nation. And when we say, I mean. You know, I use the word trafficked a lot, and sometimes it, you almost get synthesized to the term, but basically, another way to put it, he was raped from when he was 5 to 15 years old right, right. every single day, right? And that's, that's what this means. Um, and it took him a long time and lots of, you know, getting up and falling down again to really find his, his base. Mm -hmm. um, he has a family now, and he has this organization called The Hope Project, which specifically caters to male victims of, of human trafficking. So I, I think that's still an under-researched um, uh, area in terms oh, of how much yes. men are, are sexually assaulted, because men can be sexually assaulted. It's mm -hmm. just not spoken about by far. Um, and especially young boys who are um, who get into the trafficking industry, um, obviously by force, and right. and it's just um, it's just a terrible reality. Yeah. So, do you find that men are l least likely to express this has happened to them because they're they're men? Yeah, or, or and it's, little boys? It's, I it's think for a lot of people, it may be difficult to understand. Like, mm -hmm. how can a man be sexually assaulted? You know, yeah. and but it happens. It happens, and there's a lot of complications, subtleties to to such a thing, but it happens even. At the hands of another man, of course, um, and even at the hands of a, of a woman yes. as well. That th mm -hmm. this this does happen. Mm -hmm. um, it's just again, 
hasn't been researched as extensively um, and, and certainly requires more participation from, from all of us to find out more about what's going on in this regard. Right. Mm -hmm. right. You know, um, I think it was a Fisher story. What was it? There was a movie that came out, mm. I think, that I think it was uh, based on a true story. Okay. Um, I'm so bad with names. <laughs> uh, help me, Jarvis. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Something Fisher story. Okay. Fisher? No, it wasn't Carrie Fisher. Was it? And Antoine Fisher. Yeah, that was his story. Okay. And it was based on uh, a tr uh, true story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was basic, based on the true story, the Ann Fisher story. Uh, where he had gone through this, and he I actually see. went back to um, um, the people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was a woman right. in the story. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny how I think what, even with that movie, when it came out, we heard more of it right. during that time where young men had been molested yeah. or raped by women. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and within the movie itself. Right. How could I forget? That's one of my favorite actors was in yeah. that movie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and I'm so happy that, like I said, there's no words for me to, there aren't any words for me to express the gratitude um, of what you're doing. Thank you. No. You know, I and I know I keep that. saying that, but it's just, it means a lot. Thank you. It means a Thank lot you. for people to have a platform to say, you know, I can go speak to someone. Right. I can talk to someone. So how are you getting the word out to, to let people know uh, that this is happening this week? Is this open to the public? Uh, well, yeah. The workshop? People have to register, of course. Yes, um, okay. So they can register on our website, hersummit.org. Okay. Again, the proceeds go into our, our projects that, that address these various issues um, and to donations to our partner organizations that are also um, at the grassroots level. So we have a marketing company that we're working with, so they're, they're trying to put, put the word out there through shows like yours, you know? Yeah, thank um, you. Yeah, so, uh, and just we just welcome participation from people. And, and if, if uh, individuals are interested in attending as a group, we also offer, you know, group discounts to make it more affordable to certain persons. Um, so they can just email us, info at hersummit.org, and just have, have that request. Now, how are you going to get the word out to, I know we, everybody's working grassroots yeah. as well, but say there's uh, a group of homeless youth that want to attend and they can't afford to register. Is there an open? Yeah, so uh, we actually have some of the youth at Covenant House that, that will be attending through them. Um, and that's, I think, always better to, and anyway, in terms of youth itself, Covenant House is the place in mm -hmm. um, Los Angeles to, to go. So um, if there are, of course, individuals uh, such as that, then okay. it would be better to, for them to register under a parent. Um, or, of course, there's no charge at all to them. It's just so that we know who they are and how many are, are, are attending. Okay. I mm -hmm. just want to make sure that's clear. So yeah, exactly. if someone, you know, even if someone's listening who maybe have uh, a home. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, right. that right. might want to uh, register themselves, but they have youth there. Right. That can't afford to maybe bring, you know, a couple yeah. or a few of them and with them. And there's them. always, you know, special cases like these. So, yes. uh -huh. again, they can just send us an email at info at her, her and, and we'll we'll make sure to process that request. I know you would. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted yeah. to make sure I make that yeah, clear for, sure. for the show. Definitely. Because there are a lot of people that are listening. And yeah. please share this with your friends and family. Right. Because you never know uh, who's out there and who would definitely need. Yeah. Uh, to actually be there to mm -hmm. hear what's out, uh, going to be available for them. Exactly. Yeah. I and we have, you know, wonderful. speakers coming in from all over the world for mm -hmm. this. You know, we have two brilliant ladies coming in from Dubai. Her Excellency, Sara al Madani, she's an um, entrepreneur, fashion designer. She works with government um, in Dubai. Another lady, Hala Kazim, who is um, basically a uh, uh, social entrepreneur and life coach, um, brings these women all over the world in, in uh, transformative journeys. Um, our opening address is being given by Henry Lozano, who is a former deputy assistant to both Bill Clinton and George Bush um, and has been involved with the White House in, in various things. Um, speakers such as yourself, of course, um, special agent from the Department of Justice will be there. Tom, as I mentioned, who owns that project to address human trafficking amongst uh, uh, boys and, and men. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of other business owners who are doing their part in addressing these issues. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think it's wonderful. Yeah. I'm excited. Me too. This is Me too. next it's week. Be huh? uh, next week. Yep. Next weekend. Yep. Thursday yeah. evening is our opening night, the fashion show. And then Friday and Saturday are the main conference events. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So um, 
what it what in looking at our audience and mm -hmm. what would you want to tell them you know um, not so much in a nutshell uh, to take away from the show today something very powerful what would you want them to walk away from knowing well i think the fact that you know first and foremost all of us are human beings we we have to realize that it, it seems like such a cliched or or obvious statement but we have to realize that we're all human this country right now, the United States, is going through a lot of problems, but so are other countries all over the world. So we should never limit ourselves to um, who we should help and how we can help, because there's a lot that we could do. There's a lot that one individual can do. There's a lot that one organization can do. And all of, all of you could do amazing things for yourselves and especially for others as well. So there's two words that I never forget um, th that I base my entire life on. One is purpose and the other is responsibility. So when we talk about purpose, it's what's the purpose of your life? Why, why are you here? If you have to summarize your existence in just a few sentences, what would that be? And in terms of responsibility, who are we responsible for? Are we just responsible for ourselves, our family, our community, our city, our country? Or are we somehow responsible for the entire world and human beings all over? So there's a lot of problems that are going on. Every day you see in the news and every day we complain, we point fingers that this person's not doing so well or that person's not doing so well. And we have all of these, this um, hate that's perpetuating throughout the country and the world because of the problems that are going on. But as one person told me when I first started actually everything and why I started everything, there's something he mentioned to me which I never forgot. And he said, focus on the solution, not the problem. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of problems out there. W what are we gonna do about that? If we're not doing anything about it, I feel that we don't have a right to complain. So if we want to have our voices be heard, then let's do something about this as well. Let's yes. get in there, let's get down and dirty and solve these problems that we claim to be passionate about. And it's our responsibility to do so. I believe so. Yeah. I that's believe basically so. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that's well put, well <laughs> put. You. And <clears throat> I just want to say that, you know, there's things that I tell everyone in life because a lot of time, I, you know, meeting people sometime and they, they tell me, oh, I just have nothing to do. Mm -hmm. It's like, you got to be kidding. Yeah, nothing exactly. to do. Right. So I will be give them your number. <laughs> yeah, sure. And yeah. I do give them things mm -hmm. to do and uh, some events to become involved with. Become right. involved. Right. When you become involved, you don't sit back and feel like, woe is me and my life. And, you know, you stop having such pity parties mm -hmm. when you kind of could see what's going on around you. Sometimes it's like, well, gee, my life is not that bad. And mm -hmm. I can be instrumental. I can show what I can do to be a productive human being mm -hmm. as well. You know, but first work, we work on ourselves and then pull yourself away from that. Sometimes we're just too stuck in our own minds, mm -hmm. too stuck in where we are. Pull yourself away from that. Because once you actually start giving to others, you feel this overwhelming right pleasure feeling within your body when you know that I have done something positive to help someone else right it makes you feel good right you know to be able to do that so right. each one like you had so wonderfully put uh, can reach out to really help others and that's what I that's what I find about you and been knowing you for years you. you're not just one of these people setting up a nonprofit and want to just have events for right. people to come out and dress good and red carpets right. and stuff right. you actually you walk to walk mm -hmm. and that's what i that's why you're here today thank you because thank i'm you proud so that you really walk to walk you talk to talk thank you. and you're out here to pull everything together for us to to be able to be supportive with you right so it's a team of people right and to pull away from this hatred because all you're doing is destroying yourself you're destroying yourself with all this hatred holding right. on to this hatred if you if you were to uh, test your pH during the time you're bitter and hatred, you're setting yourself up for a array of medical conditions, especially cancer, because the body becomes very acid as you're very angry. So you don't want to stay in that mode of anger. As you're being passionate to help others and stepping out of your comfort zone, which you, you really do, you step out of your comfort zone to help others, is actually going to help you and your overall well-being. But if you watching all this, and it's, it's painful to hear that a young man or a child was raped at the age mm -hmm. of five, but no hold on to the anger of that 
step into the passion of what you can do to help others and don't hold on to anger because the more you hold on to that even as the person goes through whatever it's going to make them very ill right so it does change your chemistry of your body so you don't want to do that do it with love do it with passion and therefore you will stay healthy you will have a healthier heart because when you do things and your heart is in it like yours the heart stays healthier right. but if you do things and you don't do it with a, a good conscious or heart then there's things that start happening with that person and you wonder well, well I wonder what happened to them and I wonder this and I wonder that but you have to really come from the heart mm -hmm. come from the heart when, when you do yeah uh, projects exactly like like you're doing right mm -hmm. and you know it's it's always a challenge to be involved in any of these things to be yes. involved in human rights activism yes. to make a difference but there's there's something I always remember is that despite this challenge there is a certain inexpressible joy in doing what yes. you feel is absolutely right yes and i, I never forget that yeah. so despite how difficult things can get the fact that i know i'm doing my absolute best to address these issues i i, I wouldn't have it any other way yeah. you know and i know because people tell me oh my goodness you just work so hard you work sometimes seven days a week i can go to the clinic seven days a week yeah but when I walk out of there, I have more energy than I yeah, get when I walk right. in mm -hmm. because of the joy right. that I receive seeing a person transform from walking right. in feeling bad, from walking in feeling hopeless, to walking out feeling there's hope. Mm -hmm. They look at me and say, you know, you survived two comas. You survived two pulmonary embolism. You survived as a child at seven years old, mm -hmm. scheduled to have both your legs amputated. Mm -hmm. You survived this, and you still look like this. And I'm a grandmother of almost 10. Wow. <laughs> so being wow. able to survive this, mm -hmm. you can say, you know, this can happen to you. Because right. God is no respect of person. He loves me as he loves you. And you, you're going through this journey, and it's not, not based on religion, I know. But we all, there is a divine mm -hmm. um, person here, and I, I see it as God. And who can take us through and move us through. Mm -hmm. Uh, and having that but I know I had a young girl who came to me who had been sexually and she was uh, abused and she was homeless and it was just really sad and she looked at me and she said don't ever tell me there's a God because mm -hmm. why would God allow this to happen mm -hmm. to me mm -hmm. you know so you know working with people and taking them where they are mm -hmm. you know and now uh, this was 20 years ago yeah. and I ran into her about five years ago she's a totally different person wow. You know, so just getting people sometimes put on the right track. Maybe you need to be over here for a while. You need to be there because everything is different, what, what that person's need is. But my prayer is, and I ask um, for direction on everything I do to be instrumental, to be able to be a blessing to help each person. Because if I cannot make a positive change in your life, I don't need to be in your space. Mm -hmm. I don't need to. I don't need to have this show. Yeah. If this show is not going to be something that's going to be make a positive change in a person's life, then it shouldn't be here. Right. You know, there's so many other things that could be done. But my my prayer every day is to be a person that I can be a blessing, even if it's only a smile, right. even if it's a hug, heart to heart, even if it's only a hug. So to be a blessing to someone, it might not. not it may not be a financial blessing, but it's just that warm look. I had a person um, that I that I know. He said, "Look at me, and with your eyes, tell me that you care about me, mm -hmm. with your eyes." And I said, "That's that's pretty deep." Mm -hmm. So I stood, I sat there and tried it. Mm -hmm. And he said, "Okay, I can see it. I can <laughs> see it, but you have to really kind of." You know, so if you have that embedded in you, right. that I'm looking at you not to find fault, not to criticize, but I'm looking at you to find some beauty. I don't care. Everybody has some beauty. And I, I have a friend. She said, it's amazing. We could be out. You're always complimenting people. But I do. That's a nice shirt. That's a beautiful haircut. Something. I, I get on the elevator with men, and I said, that is, because men haircuts are totally different now than they used to be years ago. That is a really unique, nice hair, mm. ha nice, ha nice haircut. But be authentic. You know, you just don't say it to just be saying something. Be an authentic person. Right, right. And that's when you be who you are and come from a place in your heart and be an authentic, then people can see that. They can see it. They can feel it. This is why I do very little advertising. My website needs so plenty of work. <laughs> but, you know, I have people calling me every day, mm -hmm. all day. 
It's because of the time I spend with them. It's be t because I'm a passionate person, because I know what it's like to be in a hospital. I know what it's like being a child. I know what it's like being in a home and never feeling loved. So I, you know, by my mother, yes. But I know what that feel like. And so when you go through this, then you're able to reach out and help another person. Mm -hmm. Because I could look in their eyes and say, oh, my goodness, what are you going through? Why don't you share it with me? Yeah. And, they, and, and listen. That's what I found being a patient myself a lot as a child. People didn't listen. They didn't listen to the child. They didn't listen to her or him. And you have to take time to listen to people. Right. That is so, that is more powerful sometimes than giving them medication. Just listen. Mm -hmm. Just listen. They need someone, they need to vent. Right. They need to get it out. Let them get it out instead of keep suppressing, suppressing, suppressing these things and feel comfortable with a person that they can talk to. And it's not going to be everywhere else or they just don't care. You have to be a caring person. Mm -hmm. And that's what I don't find a lot in medicine today. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I'm thrilled that I'm part of your organization, you. your, your event, not Likewise. your organization, but your event. Yeah. And uh, I feel that I do have a lot to give based on my own past experience sure. from two years old up to now, you know, and it's just part of life. You could have families and still feel homeless. Mm -hmm. You know, you could be in a home and still feel homeless. Right. So just because you're in a home doesn't mean that you're feeling nurtured in love. So a safe place where a person feel loved and nurtured and cared for it is very important. Mm -hmm. So people need to just take time. I like to role play, and I did it with my children because I wanted to know where were they, where, were their, where was their mind, what would they think through their eyes. That's a chapter of my book, through the eyes of a child. What did you see? What are you feeling? You know, I want to know this. Mm -hmm. and so we role play. They would be me, and I would be them, mm -hmm. and we would role play for mm -hmm. a day. And that was so powerful for me to see through their eyes what it is. How do you see me as your mother? How do you perceive me i'm going to show you how i perceive you and then we at the end of the day you know we sat down at dinner and we discussed these things which was very powerful mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That, so i learned a lot right. about me right so i think people need to do that so if you're in a home it doesn't mean that you're in a happy home and you're loved mm -hmm. and you're nurtured you know and that's why a lot of these kids run away mm -hmm. You know, they don't want to be there right. for various reasons. Right. And these things happen. But some of the, you know, incidents happen within the home. So the molestation and the rape happen right. within the home mm -hmm. itself. So you have to be somewhere, safe haven home, someplace where you can feel safe. And there are many other homes. And I want people to, to text me if you know of a home as well. Uh, please text me uh, and, and let us know. Let us know so we can put this on a list and have a a list of places and with yourself and you know because you, i'm sure they're they're over you're overwhelmed mm -hmm. they are at the place where they are and we all come together we have to come together and take the time to really love yourself Definitely. love yourself if you love yourself you're not going to go out and spew all this hate right if you love yourself you're just not going to do that so if you take the time to love yourself and find out where that's coming from what where is this hatred coming from you know, where is this bitterness coming from? If it's from your parents, well, then where is it? If it's generational, where is it coming from? It's coming from somewhere. So you've got to go back and try to figure out where is this coming from mm -hmm. so that you can change and break that chain yourself so that we can live in a more happier world today. Right. Right. You have to. Mm -hmm. I agree. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So you have anything to add to that? No, or I think you said it beautifully well. And, of course, uh, just encouraging everyone to yes. to come attend our, our event next month. I mean, and next week, I should <laughs> say. Um, and, and just keep on fighting the good fight. That's yes. that's why we're all here. Yes. So. And I'm sure everything, because Jarvis here is just wonderful. And I'm sure everybody can see when the date is mm -hmm. of the event uh, so they can register early. Right. And um, come as you are. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be wonderful. Yeah. It's going to be great. Yep. And, I, I, and again, I'm excited to be part of it. And Thank I think you, you learned some things about me today you didn't know. Yes. So, yes. Uh, and because it's, it, we've been knowing each other for a long time, mm -hmm. and but never to sit down and really talk. Right, exactly. Exactly. So I'm just grateful for this time. And Thank you, likewise. Grateful Thank that so I have met your, your, your beautiful mom. She Thank is you. so yeah. beautiful. Yes. And, and your, your, your sister is wonderful, too. Yeah. We have to sit down and have lunch soon. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, we Without definitely that. do. Mm -hmm. But I want to thank you, and thank you. Uh, as I tell all my guests, 
as they watch the show. And you kind of summed up everything. I usually let people kind of sum up things in mm -hmm. the end. But you basically, I, wa I didn't want you to sum it up when it was too short. Mm -hmm. That's why I let you speak when you did. But as we are beginning to end the show, uh, tune in next week. But as I always say, repeat after me, as I have on my button today, I am. And we know the great I am. So repeat after me. Okay. <laughs> I am. I am. So grateful. So grateful. That I am. That I am. A magnet. A magnet. For miracles. For miracles. I and, love that. Yeah. And you certainly are. So I'm going to you. put a pin a button on your white shirt <laughs> yeah, over there. Sure. <laughs> but we all are. And that's what we want to be is magnet for miracles. We want to be magnets to pull this in. Magnets to pull in joy uh, and, and pull it out of other people. So I'm just so thrilled and I'm so thankful. So tune in next week for New Wellness TV with Dr. Lee. Visit our YouTube channel. We're also now at iHeartRadio. Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful. And I want to thank my social media people, uh, Kimberly Howard. I also want to thank uh, Natasha uh, Walker, who has been there since day one. You know, been truly a blessing. I thank you. And I thank Mike Jarvis, my wonderful uh, production genius over here. Thank you. Tune in next week to New Wellness TV with Dr. Lou Lee. Please visit our YouTube channel and share this show with all your friends and family. Join us every Wednesday live at 11 a.m. for New Wellness TV with Dr. Lee. Remember, healthy mind, healthy body. <laughs>